in four days' time, the uh, Euro 2013 tournament opens in Israel. It's an under-21 tournament for eight teams, and I'm sure Israel will put on a glossy European tournament that we're all used to. The slightly unusual part this time is that Israel isn't in Europe, and uh, the borders of Israel contain two communities. So on this trip, we're going over there to have a look in the shadow of Euro 2013 to have a look at what football means for the Palestinians, how it's organised and uh, how important it is to them. I've been to Palestine before, I went there last year, met officials from the Palestine Football Association and uh, I've got many contacts over there in different towns in the West Bank and we're going to see what their players and coaches think of football, how difficult it is to play because of certain restrictions on their movement and lack of money. Those two things mean it's a struggle to uh, maintain leagues and get fixtures played. But there's a great love of football in Palestine and we hope to be picking up on some of that. There is also this uh, huge dividing wall. It's been there the best part of ten years. And it, it cuts right across the land of Israel and Palestine. And uh, for the Palestinians, they won't, because of that wall, they won't be able to see much of this tournament. And uh, it's as if the wall is dividing them from the sport and maybe some of them want their ball back. So we're going to see the, the wall be a recurring motif of this visit. And we want to see if we can see over it and tell the Palestinians what's on the other side of it. It's early Sunday morning now, and we're just going to go across the Allenby Bridge, the historic Allenby Bridge, into the West Bank. And uh, from there head to Ramallah, which is the uh, home of the Palestinian Football Association, which is about uh, 30 miles on the other side of the crossing. So yeah, slightly uh, nervous because this is the main crossing we'll be making with all our equipment, but hopefully within an hour we'll be closer to our goal. Hi, Mr. How are you? They're good, thanks. Thank you. How was your trip? Very good indeed, thanks. We were slightly delayed, but everything's fine. It's really nice to be here. Yes, you're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> you know, in our society, it's a popular game in Palestine. So we have to develop it. One time, Lilian Turam, you know Lilian Turam? He said to me something. He said if the football can transfer a message that the political level cannot transfer between the nations. So it's, we, have to, we have to develop it because we have a case, a special case. Because you know our stadiums, uh, you know the, first, the stadium in Ramallah, behind the stadium there is a settlement, Israeli settlement. Yes. And also in the Faisal Hussein Stadium, it's the main stadium in Palestine, Jidarek. we have the separation wall. We want to see uh -huh. that. The new building of the uh, Palestine Football Association yeah. is beside also the wall. You don't know if the teams you're hoping to play will be able to get here? Yes. Right until it the depends. last minute? Yes, it, de it depends. It depends to the permission, to, the, to, to their approval, to the Israeli side's approval. Uh, the other team for, yes, for the permission paper. Yeah, it's very difficult, but we pass it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't... And we will try. Always we have to try. Yeah. For us, it's a challenge for Israeli occupation, you know? Because sometimes uh, Israeli occupation uh, prevent some teams to visit Palestine. It prevent the host of tournaments, you know? And sometimes they prevent to, uh, or they, they refuse to issue permission papers for, uh, for players or teams, you know? So it's a challenge for us. The first international match was played in this stadium. I, was, I played, I was a national uh, player that was before I stopped playing for the national team. But we didn't know how many people are coming to see the match. And it was a friendly match between us and Jordan. So when coming out on the field, you just can't imagine the feeling knowing that there's more than 20, 25,000 people coming. And even probably, I, I didn't saw, but I heard from people, there were around 10,000 outside. They couldn't even come in. 10 years after the uh, officially FIFA took Palestinian Football Association back under their umbrella. The Palestinian uh, Football Association was the first football association in Asia. It was established in 1924, which is before even the Israel came here. What we're having now is that we tried, this is the first time that we had actually women's uh, Asian qualification yes. last month here yes. in Palestine. So uh, 
we didn't care about the, the, the results at that moment because the, people, the, the national teams, they came, they were much, much better and this time than Palestine. What we cared about is to show people that we can do even that part of the, of the football. I played for the U19 about four games and I played for the national team. I played two or maybe three games. I'm a left wing. Uh, it's uh, great. I love uh, football. I love playing football, especially in the national team. Mm. Uh, we have many experience. Uh, we play with many national teams from many countries. It's a pleasure to play for Palestine. How does it feel as women footballers to represent your country? Uh, I'm very happy to play in, uh, to my country. Uh, I hope uh, to, win, to win and uh, raise our, uh, the name of our country high. It's a great honor to be able to represent your country with something that you love and try to do it the best way you can. I feel something in my heart, like, you know, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we receive a lot of attention um, from the uh, women's department and we have a lot of, like, they, t they pay a lot of attention to us, so we feel quite equal to the men's play. We still need a little bit more support when it comes to fans, and we just need time, more time. It's not easy because we are a people and, and different culture between any countries in the world. Uh, this, so, this is so hard, but uh, we are, I think so, uh, start uh, with the professional team, with the women team in the Palestine, the world, we are start. And then we go back to the political problems. That even the national teams that come from outside, they have a problem. The Israelis, there are two players, they're, they're women, and they're young players. They stopped him in Jordan, they didn't let him to come in. And they're to Myanmar or uh, Chinese Taipei, or it was Taiwan. And this was deliberately to spoil the match? Just to spoil the match. Just mm. they wanted this, this one and this one are not allowed to, to enter the pal until here. So what's actually happening is that there is a third party that doesn't want us to succeed. The Israelis are kind of smart. They know how to cover this and be like, nothing is going on. And they have their ways like um, to kind of mess things up, but without anybody knowing. So when you guys come and show support and try to show the real side of the story, our side of the story, that would be just amazing. Thank you. Yeah, we're launching something Everybody called the Palestine the Football the Supporters team. Club which is an international think, yeah. club for supporting huh? Palestinian okay. football. Yeah. And we'd like to give you these three shirts as a gift. Thank and in thanks, in thanks for the training <laughs> session. Yeah, on the peace. But we hope that uh, people will, uh, will support us. Well, that would be great because um, we have a lot of problem when it comes to media in Palestine because Israel comes and they cover all the their sides and they show us they show themselves that as the victims, and we just like a lot of people don't even know what Palestine is. To show support for the Palestinian case and for the Palestinian national team, that would be awesome. And we want to succeed because we are not different than any other nation. We live under occupation, but we want to show the people that there is something under that. We, we don't want to fight you know, and, and, and go to the war with them. We want to try to get a nice opportunity and try to find something better for, for sports, for sportsmen and women in Palestine. Yeah. Not just football. <laughs> Palestine. The wall is actually a hundred meters from this side of the stadium and around 200 meters from that side. My wife's house or her parents are over there and I'm not allowed to get, it's exactly over there and I'm not allowed to, to, to go there. You know, it's impossible for me to go there because I need the permission to enter the Israel. We just had an interesting visit to the Faisal Stadium in the outskirts of Jerusalem, which is the Wembley, if you like, of Palestinian football. And in comparison, we're now hoping to take a taxi to uh, Jerusalem to see the Teddy Stadium, which is the venue for the final of Euro 2013. It should be an interesting comparison. We're off to see what the contrast looks like. And the journey there will be interesting too, because we've got to make our way from a Palestinian controlled area to an Israeli controlled area.
might have more trouble than we did getting here, but we've successfully arrived in West Jerusalem, outside the Teddy Stadium, which is the venue for the final of Euro 2013. Now one very significant point about the position of this venue is that from an Israeli point of view, the final is to be played in Jerusalem rather than Tel Aviv. When Israel and Palestine were separated or partitioned in 1948, Jerusalem was made an international city belonging to neither community. But over the intervening years, it's gradually assumed a more Israeli persona, with the steady clearing of East Jerusalem of um, Palestinian families. But this is the venue for the final. we got one of the most well-known views on earth. This is Jerusalem and the Dome of the Rock, a city of great interest, controversial city, and one of huge significance for three major religions. It's a view most Palestinians don't get to see. We're now on the other side of that dividing wall, of course, but this remains the spiritual home of Palestine. For many of them, it's out of sight and they're unable to visit. But it doesn't change the fact that for them, this is their, their holiest place in this country, and one day they would like this to be the capital of a free Palestine. What I've noticed coming from Ramallah, only a short distance to Jerusalem, once you get beyond that wall, there's an enormous change in the environment. The buildings are better, more opulent, the roads are wide and clean, everything's green, flowers everywhere. This is what can be done with huge investment. Yeah, at 7.30 we're seeing the General Secretary of the Palestinian Football Association. Now, I came here a year ago with four points, uh, a four-point programme for them, which involved the establishment of the Palestinian Football Supporters Club. Uh, we'd like to do a replica shirt for the Palestinian team, an official replica shirt, which we're well underway with, and we want their agreement about the design. The uh, third thing is that we want to start organising uh, visits to Palestine for football supporters. We're going to get their list of fixtures for the coming year, men's and women's football, and see what we can do bringing people interested in football to come and see the situation here. The fourth thing we'd like to do in connection, and with officially in connection with the Palestinian Football Association, is to start selling other merchandise, badges, key rings, that sort of thing, scarves, we think we can uh, get a lot of interest in that sort of stuff. What we like about it is there are no words. This says Palestine and it says football. Hi, my friend. My best friend. <laughs> we can go in for a round of the camp. We can see where they play. Maybe we will find some uh, youngs who play in the street. Yeah, that's okay. But the other thing great. is, yesterday we went mm. to uh, West Jerusalem. Yes. Where it's all very uh, expensive and yeah, sure. flowers and trees. Yeah, but it's a nice place. Also. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But here we want the contrast to that. It's only five miles away, I should think, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. yeah. But it no. might as well be a million miles away. Yes, you're right. This is the the new medical center for the UN, UNRWA, the United Hi. Nation. Hello. Hello, my friend. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. <laughs> well, we're in what's called the basic girls' school on the edge of the refugee camp. Most of the children are taking exams right now. They're not here. But uh, everyone speaks of the importance of sport in the curriculum. But uh, as you look around here, you can see that this very small play area is all that there is for 700 kids to play sport. For us, the football is very important, especially for our case, because we are under the occupation. So we would like to send a message for, for the world that we are a human and people and need to get our freedom. And the football, that it's, it's, it's a message for peace for our children and our players and our peoples in Palestine. Yeah, that's, it's hard for me to, to see the children or the kids are playing in the street because there are no space for them to go in to play a football. There are no space, there are no grass, 
there are no field for them to go into play and they, they, they uh, lose their time to stay to, in the street. So that's not good for them. <laughs> And we need our uh, children to think about the sports and to think about the peace. Don't only think about the war and our problems between the Israeli authority. Yeah. So we need to the, them to, to, to going or to play a football, to play a tennis ball, to play anything that's to change the years' mind yeah. and to think in a good way, not a bad way. We also live for our future, we build our future, we build our country and hope also to get the, our freedom from the occupation. And we will learn to live with hope for our children also. You see? Because it's, it's not me, it's just my grandfather, my grandmother li lived also with hope. So they learned me that and my mother, my father, and also I have to learn to live with hope to my children. Yes. When I get married. My name is Abdullah Al Farah. I am the executive director of the National Steam Department in the PFA, the Palestinian Football Association. I actually born here in the camp. My family are here. Uh, my friends. Uh, my I spent all my life in the camp. For we us. love the football and we would like to going. Yeah. yeah. To watch a game. Yeah. But, you know, we need the permits yeah. to going of course. to to watch a football game. So that's that's bad. It that's would be very bad. Friendly if like the Israeli Football Association invited the Palestinian Football Association to be part of it. Yeah. How they will invite us and they they, uh, they are it's not allowed for our players to go in from city to city in Palestine. So would how you, do you, you think that they will invite us to going to watch a game? Would you refuse if they invited you? For me no. For me no. Because I love the football and I think the message from the football, it's the fair play and the beast. This is the problems of the polity. Yeah. I think they need to to to, uh, uh, to don't mix the, the politics and and sports. I think I think they need to do something to, to, to the sport to help us in our message, especially in the sports. They need to help our players, our teams, because we have actually a serious problems. But our clubs, our players, we cannot invite the players from Gaza for our national team. We cannot have a stage, for example, for our national team in our land. We, we collect our players to, in Jordan or in Qatar. This is not right. We are a national team without nation. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> we, we have that uh, soon. We can, we can play in our land. We can enjoy our life here in our, in our land, we hope that when you will come back again to our uh, country, uh, to see our state, our people, our friendly peoples here. And you are welcome anytime. Lovely to see Thank you again. Thank you so much. I'll see you again soon. the seats of the spectators uh, we faced a lot of uh, problems to build it because the Israeli side prevented us to, to build it and also we cannot organize uh, matches here uh, at night because of the light we cannot you know we cannot use a, a, a what we say a force light because of the settlement they said it's uh, it's a threat in our security this is my stadium, this is my team here. What is interesting about this field is that this area is what we call Area C, which means that you're not allowed to build unless you get permission from Israelis. Uh, why is it called Area C? We have three areas, A, B, and C. Uh, a is total Palestinian authority, so you don't need any permission from anyone. B is mutual territories. So it depends where you are. You have to get mutual, from both sides uh, permission. So you get the Palestinian permission, then you go and take the Israeli permission to build whatever it is, no matter if it's a house, even if it's your own land. And then we have C, which means that it's total Israeli territory and you're not allowed to build unless you get 
their permission. And one of the things that happened at the beginning of the second uprising is that young boys, they had a training here, and the Israeli settlements start shooting them. And one of the kids got injured with a real bullet. So then we stopped practicing here for around a year, two years, and then we uh, started again. What we start, which is, see, if you look over there, we still need to continue this building, and we're still waiting for Israeli permission to do that, because they are scared that if we uh, cover it, that there is a chance that uh, somebody can shoot to the settlement under under the the under these you know buildings or whatever it's gonna be. What we're looking for is that we're looking for someone who can help us, you know. So maybe they made even the pressure on Israelis to say, okay, this field is for everyone, and this is for people who wanna play. And you, if you wanna come and play, there is no problem. I don't think Palestinians will have a problem if you come and arrange to play in this field. Uh, but in the same time, uh, they don't want to come because they're scared to come. And in the same time, they don't want us to have what we are looking for. I, I'm, I'm sure that there was some kind of a pressure uh, on, on Israelis to, to uh, allow these facilities to start because it's not going to look nice uh, in the eyes of the, of the foreigners that Israel is making this kind of pressures. If it's a political issue, okay, we don't have a problem. If we want to build, a, for example, a big jail or bring uh, weapons from outside, yes, it's a political issue. Maybe they will get involved, but because we're talking about sport facilities, I don't think that they should uh, have any problem with it. And sometimes we really have a problem because, uh, like I said, this area is still uh, it's under Israeli occupation, so sometimes you can, feel, you can see even the militaries, they come when there is a game and a lot of uh, uh, spectators are, are here. Sometimes they think it's going to happen something, so they just pass by just to, to, to see if it's everything okay. And after they see that it's just a football match, they just leave. There is an academy. Uh, here we're going to look at Academy too, we're going to visit it. Uh, hopefully I'm going to explain you a few things about Academy. These are the things that we're trying to, to do, like I said yesterday, it's like we're trying to, to build something from the, from the zero, you know. These grassroots, these are, these are our future. So we're trying, this is, this is something that we couldn't, we, we haven't uh, 10 years ago. So now they have uh, the same opportunities to practice and play like any other kid in the world. So now we're do, working on how to develop them from, uh, from, from, let's say, uh, if they are 7, 10, 12 years old, we're trying to develop them so that one day they can represent our country in a nice, in a, the most uh, beautiful way. Yeah, this is the, the new academy building. It's still under the construction, like you can see. It was originally made to be a motel, you know, for the teams who come here and if, they're, if, they're, if it's a late, they have to spend the night somewhere because it was very hard to move throughout the West Bank mm -hmm. when it's a very late. The Israeli forces will stop him or make him a trouble. And what we're trying to do here in Academy is that we're going to bring the coaches from all around the world. Uh, probably the, most of them already volunteered to come. They're going to spend years here coaching little kids. Uh, it's going to start from year 7 to year 10. We're going to have kids who will actually spend all day week here in academy. They will have a two practices a day, they will eat, of course, healthy food by the certain schedule. They will go to a school, they will have a special school and special classes for them will be in between two practices. And then at the end of the week, they will go home for two days to be with their family. Of course, uh, what we're planning to do is we're going to bring as much as kids as we can it doesn't, it's not going to be uh, choosing the children from the teams or from the clubs. We're just going to go to schools, to, to, to the street, to wherever we can find kids between 7 and 10 years old and give them a chance to participate in this program. It's going to be a future program and future plan to one day reach what is our goal and that's to play in the Asian or even uh, World Cup. Well, I hope you find a Palestinian Messi. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully one day maybe we can find that in your message. Or even Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah. Rooney, Rooney. Yeah. Rooney, <laughs> maybe Rooney, yes. Here you can see one of my friends, Nunez. He's a goalkeeper of Chilean Palestino team. 
And the interesting thing is here that you have three Palestinian kids who don't understand Spanish and he doesn't speak Arabic. So the football is actually the language of the only language they are talking. football fans at a particular time and to a particular place. The time was dictated by the opening of the UEFA Under-21 European Championships in neighbouring Israel. The place drew us because, in extreme contrast to this tournament and hidden by the mainstream media, the difficulties faced by the Palestinian people in expressing themselves in the international language of football symbolise a wider yearning for acceptance and recognition for a stateless nation which stretches now for 65 years. We cannot stop this tournament, but nor can we stop our support, through football, for the people of Palestine. <laughs> 